For decades, Evansville residents have traveled out Broadway Avenue to make their way to Burdette Park. A longtime destination for summer fun, families, companies, and originally veterans have relaxed, hiked, and picnicked in the wooded hills. In recent years, the many upgrades to the swimming pool have made Burdette the most visited water park in Evansville. In 1928, 40 acres in southeastern Perry Township were purchased by American Legion Post Number 187. They turned this land into a park, naming it after a local soldier, Everett Burdett, who was killed in action during World War I. The American Legion Park would soon be home to their new clubhouse. The clubhouse, which still stands in the park, was established for community groups in addition to Legion members. The Post had many visions for the park, but could not fulfill them on their own. In the next year, as the Great Depression began to pull the country into economic turmoil, there were further delays of development. Over the next five years, the American Legion Post held the park, but did little to improve it. After seven years of inactivity at the park, control was transferred to the local government. In 1932, Franklin Delano Roosevelt won the presidential election by a landslide. He campaigned with a plan to stimulate the faltering economy. In the event that the national emergency is still critical, I shall not evade the clear course of duty that will then confront me. I shall ask Congress for the one remaining instrument to meet the crisis, broad executive power to wage a war against the emergency as great as the power that would be given to me if we were in fact invaded by a foreign foe. This war would be waged through the policies of the New Deal. Times were desperate. 11,000 of the 25,000 banks in the country had failed. Thousands had lost their homes, and a quarter of the population was unemployed. To battle the crisis, many government programs were developed to stimulate the economy and put people back to work. The first of these agencies to begin work on the park was the Civil Works Administration, or the CWA. Created in the fall of 1933, the CWA built parks, roadways, and public buildings. The CWA lasted only about six months. In its short lifespan, intended to be temporary relief for the jobless, the CWA was responsible for employing over 4 million people. To expand upon the relief work done by the earlier agencies, the WPA was created in 1935. Employing over 8.5 million people through the life of the agency, it put $11 billion back into the economy. Burdett benefited from the work done by the WPA. The improvements to the park during this time included six cabins, three picnic shelters, a trail system with bridges within the woods, two well houses, and two levees. The crown jewel, the swimming pond, was also finished in time for opening day on July 12, 1936. The cabins consisted of one room and a small porch. These were in the works progress style, constructed from local sandstone with faux log siding. These cabins were rented on a daily basis for picnics and family weekend retreats. The trail system ran in a loop around the park. Wood and stone bridges were constructed to cross the many streams. These provided numerous hiking opportunities for park goers. Two levees, or earth dams, were built. One created a fishing pond, and the second created a swimming pond. This mineral water swimming pond was fed by an elaborate drainage and pumping system. It featured many of the same elements as the pool today. There were diving boards, slides, and various pieces of recreational equipment in and around the pond. In the rear of the pond was a small lagoon with shallow water similar to the current baby pool. This area is where the water entered the pool after it was pumped from the well some 400 yards away. Early on, the salt pool was fed by a natural salt spring, which soon played out when they were drilling for oil wells down in the Union Township. So in order to fix this, they came over and they started to drill a well trying to get back to the salt vein. They hit oil and thought they had a gold mine on their hands. They called out the uh, state militia to guard it. The ownership of the park was quickly taken downtown to go in front of a judge to make sure that Vandenberg County actually owned the park. Drilling resumed. They hit salt water. 
It was an oral that they thought they had a gold mine for a while. The water entered over a small waterfall, a favorite attraction for years in the pond. This waterfall still stands today, simply as a decoration in the pool area. The Depression-era programs performing work on the park had a budget for labor, but no funding for supplies. As a result, everything was constructed from materials available in the park or outlying areas. Local trees were cut to provide logs and lumber. Roads were made from cinders provided by the many coal-burning factories of Evansville. The sandstone used was even harvested from the local quarry. There was a quarry just west of here. And the sandstone you see on these buildings was the overburden from the hard rock that they were after. So that was discarded and the WPA went over and gathered that up. The exteriors of the cabins were simply covered with slab wood from a local sawmill to give them the look of full logs. With no budget for equipment, all structures built in the park were on a smaller scale, usually not more than one and a half stories. On opening day in 1936, over 15,000 people enjoyed the new park after walking the one and three-fourth mile walk from Broadway Avenue. As time passed, the popularity of the park increased greatly. Many families picnicked and enjoyed the various amenities, such as the swimming lake and the cabins. The park became a popular place for local companies to hold their annual family outings. In the post-war boom, Burdett became the place to be for young folks on a Friday and Saturday night. Dances were a regular occurrence, and the roller skating rink was becoming very popular. Despite the popularity of the swimming pond, it was a great burden for the park operators. Since local drilling for oil stopped the natural flow of mineral water in the area, water had to be pumped out of the spring to fill the pond. As years passed, this grew ever more difficult. In the late 1950s, the county commissioned the construction of the swimming pool. In 1961, the pool had its grand opening. It featured an Olympic-sized pool with a large diving well with one 12-foot board and two 3-foot boards. The family pool consisted of an expansive wading area that gradually descended. Boasting that it was the largest freshwater pool in the state, it was received with great enthusiasm. The park today is vastly different from that of the past. Renovation and expansions have obscured much of the history. The original cabins still stand today, but most have been modernized. Cabin 14 remains the lone unmodified cabin displaying the resourceful craftsmanship of the WPA era. Even with all of the changes, if visitors take the time and leave the crowded roads, they can find the original Burdett spirit hidden in the wooded hills. <laughs>